We're trying, we're all struggling to find this new normal. Um, we all understand as business people that we have to be customer focused. And I think we all realize that our customers are doing things differently now and may continue to do that in future. We don't know. Um, what is very clear, though, is that this business normal is applying to, or the struggle to find the business normal is applying to, is applying to all of us, whether we're a green space business, which is what we are as Earth Trust, or whether you are actually more desk bound and office bound or shop bound um, in, uh, in Oxford or in one of the um, surrounding towns and villages. Um, I want to start by just um, referring to Maslow's hierarchy of need. Um, just because this COVID crisis is having a direct impact on health and our society. And if we just remind ourselves about Maslow's hierarchy of needs, that um, requirement, that basic need for security, for safety, is pretty much near the bottom of our requirements, as is of the requirement for food, water, warmth and rest. And I'm going to, as we go through and you hear about the results of our surveys that we've been doing, I, I want to remind you about the fact that actually um, pre-COVID, there was probably a greater proportion of our population in the self-fulfillment needs and psychological needs categories in our society. And we're all now being um, focused, we're all focused on our own safety and security. Um, but I wanted to tell you a little bit about our business very, very quickly. So we're in the green space business. It's very much a business providing green spaces, quality green spaces for people to enjoy. We, we definitely see it as a business. It definitely has to be financially sustainable. And what I want to do now is to show you and share with you a little bit of our ecosystem and how that ecosystem works. So what I've been um, introducing is the fact that people are changing. They're changing how they think, they, they are changing how they act, they're changing what they do as a result of the COVID crisis. Um, they're changing actually in terms of what's important to them and their behavior has changed. And I just wanted to throw this slide up um, because I think, um, it definite, we definitely need to bear this in mind as we go through the crisis and then start to develop recovery strategies as, as we climb out of it. So I pulled this off the internet. I thought it was quite um, sweet as a little graph, but what it shows you is that um, it takes a little bit longer than you might think to change behavior as personal behavior. I'll come on to society behavior in a minute. Um, there is a myth that if you do something for a month, then um, your behavior is going to change rather like, you know, buying your gym membership in January, you do it for a month, apparently you're going to do it for the entire year. No, it doesn't work like that. It takes a little bit longer to change behavior and to maintain that behavior. Um, but the length of time depends on the person, the circumstances. Um, and in um, a study that was done in the States, it took roughly on average two months before uh, behavior became ingrained in that person's life. But it could take a lot longer than that. So depending on the circumstances, it could take from 18 to 254 days to form a new habit. Um, I wanted to just to explain to you a little bit of our business before I then get on to the stats and the um, results. So we look after green spaces. What does that mean? That means we um, have and manage and provide access for people to landscape scale green spaces. Um, and what by landscape scale, I'm talking about 500 hectares. So that's about the size of a um, medium sized farm. But because of our spaces um, and because of uh, how you can access green spaces, you do have access to a much larger geographical area than you might think, than the boundary defines. 
Um, we also look after spaces, green spaces, natural green spaces, close to where people live, um, particularly around the Thames. Um, we also improve green spaces. So actually this is um, a, a site which was, which is um, now called Thrupp Lake, which is um, the product of gravel extraction. And it sits in a sea of other lakes that are also created by gravel extraction. And what we've done here is to take something that had um, potential for biodiversity gain and good accessibility, and we've converted it into something, we've created something really special. Um, and I, if I just look at anecdotally at the number of people that are visiting Thrupp Lake at the moment, the numbers have gone through the roof. Um, now, to my data, to Earth Trust data. So we've got three segments that we've been um, asking questions of in order to test some uh, assumptions. So the first um, test, the first um, data set is around the businesses that use our nature for their own companies, for their own business. Um, these are land-based businesses. Some of them are producing food. Some of them are producing a countryside product or a training scheme. Um, they, they vary in what they offer. One of them in particular, a meadow plant nursery, actually offers plants for sale through the Earth Trust and from their home. Um, so they've each, I, I wanted to explain the differences because they each offer something different when we start interpreting the results. So the farm is also about nature and a big part of it, as well as supporting farm step businesses, is supporting wildlife. Um, and we embed that wildlife into our agricultural schemes as well. So what we're trying to do is to balance the wildlife that um, we want to encourage through our green spaces with traditional land management, such as um, arable or grazing land. And of course, a big part of it also for the Earth Trust is engaging people in those green spaces. That's our forte, that's why we're here, that's what we want to do. Um, because we believe nature is fundamental to people's health and well-being, and because um, we as a society need to have access to green space in order to start making better environmentally based decisions going forward. So the products, the things that we create um, as a result of our farm step businesses and all our volunteering effort and our staff effort, these particular places are really good test beds for engaging people in the natural world. So whether it's um, a flooded uh, a floodplain, whether it's um, a wildflower meadow, whether it's woodland, these are all really good um, tests for how people engage and demonstrations of how people engage. My second segment are our volunteers. Um, we chose volunteers because we have a lot of volunteers at the Earth Trust. We couldn't do what we do without them. Um, because they're great supporters of us and they're already very close to us in terms of our mission. My third segment um, are our social media supporters. Now these are a little bit more distant, are likely to be a little bit more distant from the other two segments who are using nature or supporting nature. That's how I would describe those two segments. These are a little bit more distant. They might come to one of our events. They might just have hopped onto our social media platforms and have found something interesting about what we're saying or what we're doing. So they're very different segments and they tell us very different things about what's going on with behavior change. So we have three assumptions. Um, the first one that we wanted to test out is have people's buying habits changed as a result of COVID-19? And I hope you can see this um, on your screen. So this, the top pie chart was taken from the stats from our social media uh, cohort. And as you can tell from the, the, the uh, top pie chart, what this says is that of the people who completed the survey, 34% are more aware um, 
and have an interest in local food or in local businesses as a result of the crisis. I think we're probably seeing that in the media. This is the first time when we've got some stats to back up what um, we're hearing and what we're observing. And I just wanted to compare that to a couple of other things, a couple of other polls that you um, might have seen. So for instance, 38% of the people are cooking more um, and 33% uh, of people are throwing away less food. So um, I can tell that people are cooking more because I can't buy any flour in the supermarket. So somebody must be using an awful lot of flour during the COVID-19 crisis. But I was also interested in the shift, and this is, and we're also seeing the shift amongst our farm step tenants, that um, people are buying more locally. That's what our farm step tenants are saying. That's what our businesses are saying. They're saying that the, the, the uh, businesses who have been able to be online, they've either had an online presence or they're moving online and been able to do that fast. And those people have been able to deliver locally um, and contactless. They, these are the businesses that are doing better than the others. So what this um, stat says is the 6% or 3 million people across the UK have actually tried a veg box scheme for the first time or they've ordered from um, a local farm. Um, and our data has shown that um, those uh, bis our businesses who have been able to shift from maybe a, a, a national um, distribution centre through to a local distribution centre like a farm shop have certainly seen an increase in um, their sales during this time. Um, so I then wanted to move on and look at the, the second assumption um, that we tested out. So have people's leisure visits to green spaces changed? And this is um, some of our data compared to some national data that um, we've been searching. So what our data said that of our supporters um, since the pandemic, so this, these were the, uh, our uh, social media supporters since the pandemic, 25% have begun to visit green spaces more frequently. Um, I think we're probably, we are seeing that, certainly we're seeing that in the majority of our green spaces, they feel busier. I just wanted to compare that so for some stat that I, I pulled off the um, web over the last couple of days, which talks about the fact that in a typical week in April, um, you would expect to see 50% of people who are visiting um, green spaces and parks. So, the, so this is a, a broader definition of green space than um, purely natural green space. Um, that is compared directly to within this piece of research to the fact that during the pandemic, 42% of people who left their homes, 36% of them, visited a park or a, a public green space. And they did so to visit either um, a, a family friend um, or a, a relative or somebody, but they they visited that person in, they, they chose a public green space, obviously because of social distancing and because of the guidelines that we've been getting from government. Um, I also wanted to share the, a little bit of a stat on our volunteering activity. So 77% of our volunteering activity has stopped, but interestingly, 50% of our volunteers, so these are the people who are really close to us, 50% are not going to be perturbed if we offer them online or more remote volunteering opportunities. And I see this as, as being um, really key to us going forward. But these people value the environment and value the ethos of the trust so much that they also recognize that um, it's important to connect with people um, and connect people to the um, environment through non-physical presence in that environment. So just a quick one um, before I try and wrap up on has people's value of their natural environment changed? 
Um, in this stat, it says that, and this is our social media, um, says that in, interest has increased by 69%. And what people are valuing is actually the location of those green spaces, the variety of the green spaces, the tranquility and the biodiversity, and that um, they're concerned that the government won't follow up um, this shift in terms of people's perceptions. <laughs>